Hey everybody, it's Kay Koopas here, and welcome back to some more Sonic Adventure 2. In the last part, we got all of our A ranks for the Cannon score, and in this part, we're going to begin my guide for Chow. Because, oh boy, there is a lot to talk about. Now, as you see, 90 of your emblems are gotten from Chow Work. However, you need to invest hours of your time if you want to get all the emblems in this game. So right off the bat, I'm going to give you a little bit of a shortcut for those of you who honestly don't care. Go to Google and type in Fusion's Chow Editor. It's a free program, it's completely safe, don't worry, I've used it before. It lets you edit every aspect of your Chow, like appearance, physical fitness, anything. You can do all that in the editor. Anyone who is even interested in Chow, even if you don't want to use it to cheat, I recommend downloading it because it's a great rate, way to track progress on your Chow. Alright, so with that, I'm going to say, this guide is going to be, um probably about four or five parts I'm going to talk about in this part I'm going to talk about the basics of Chow, the Kindergarten, and Child Chow in general. Like stats get all that stuff out of the way. Next part we're going to be talking about alignments and evolution. Then we're going to be talking about the gradual or second evolution. And then finally death and reincarnation. And then in part five I'm going to show off like little extras and possibly even begin getting all our emblems for all the races in Chow Karate. But I'll explain that when it becomes relevant. Okay, I think I've just said everything I wanted to get off my chest. Let's go ahead and enter Chow World. And just so you know, all Chow data is saved throughout profiles. So if, you have, if you're having multiple profiles, you can just come back here. Like on, sec se se on separate save files and you'll be able to edit your Chow. Now just so you know, I'm going to be using Fusion's Chow Editor for a lot of like explaining. So be prepared for that. And anyway, let's go in. When you first begin Chow World, this is all you're going to have. I'm going to do what I did before. I'm just going to go over here. This is the egg I've gotten for demonstration purposes. I'm going to put it in the water so it doesn't hatch. Eggs don't hatch if they're in the water. But anyway, this is the default chow garden. The time scale is roughly one chow year to every three real hours. So, te so technically speaking, life ha or chow have a lifespan of about five chow years. So they last about 15 hours on average. So time scale is pretty slow as you can see. Uh, just kind of slow in the garden. These toys aren't here unless you won races, but like I said, since I'm saving files, I don't feel like resetting. Uh, this is the uh, child departure machine. If you want to get rid of child, this is the only way to actually delete them. You've got trees here. You can grab onto them, and you can shake for food. This is These are called nuts. You can feed these to your chow, and they'll, you know, not only will it make their stomach nice and full, but it'll also help upgrade their stamina, which I'll explain. Okay, that was a mouthful. Now, going over the basics of Fusion's Chow Editor, just so I can get that out of the way, there's going to be multiple tabs. Like, for example, you got uh, Garden, which just lets you set how many rings you have, and then the time scale. You've got the main Chow tab, which I'm going to go into more detail as it becomes relevant. You've got, I believe, um, fruits. You've got hats and stuff like that. Most of it is pretty irrelevant for the guide, I think. I mean, and most of it is self-explanatory, like you can go one place, you can set appearances, you can change the hats that appear, but all that's not really important. Alrighty, so now that's my best, let's go ahead and hatch this little effort. So Chow, as you all know, life as a Chow begins in an egg. This is a blue Chow egg, I got this from the black market. You'll have, normally, actually I think I still have the shell here, you'll start with two Chow eggs like this, so you have two Chow to work with. And you can get more either through buying them or breeding, but like I said, not going to go into breeding. So let's pick up this chow egg. Now there's three different ways we can hatch it. We can either set it on the ground and let it do it normally. We can pick it up and shake it. Or the preferred method, throw it up against the wall. Because you are an evil son of a bitch. Now, uh, this doesn't affect the chow in pretty much any regard. So this is the best way to hatch it. Contrary to popular belief, there is absolutely no penalty for throwing a, a chow up against the wall or anything. So let's go ahead and pick up our newborn chow. When a chow is born, this is the basics. You got no name, everything's at level 0, 0 stats. Alright, so when a child is first born, it is given a randomized face. This face is completely random, nothing you do can, can sway it. The second that the egg is brought into the garden, it is given a randomized face. So, the only way to change this face is either through Fusion's Chow Editor or through rebuying the egg repeatedly. So that's the only real way you can change it. So it's got a randomized face here. You can change all this in the editor if you don't like the face. Uh, that's what I did. And yeah, so now let's go over Chow's stats. Because as you can see, we got uh, five different stats. We got swimming, flying, running, power, and stamina. These stats are all very important to the races and Chow Karate, which is how you're going to get your emblems. 
swimming is self-explanatory when your child has low swimming stats. It, he can't even swim, so let's not put him in there. I kind of feel, feel bad for him. Alrighty, now there's also flying. Flying is a stat you don't really see in the garden, but if it has a high enough stat, your child, your child can sometimes see me flying around the garden, which is kind of humorous. Running is how fast your child can move. If your child has low run stat, as you can see here, he's going to be crawling around on all fours just like a baby. So that's going to be one of the best stats you're going to want to get up quick. We got power. Power is only used in the stadium. You're, not, you're never going to notice power in the actual garden. So just saying so you know. And stamina is another thing. Stamina is an interesting stat. It's not raised through animals or drives. As I said before, all stats are raised through animals and drives. As I believe I said at the very beginning of this Let's Play. But, stamina is only raised by, as you can see here, we'll put this little guy down, and we're going to give him a nut, and as you can see, he's going to start eating. Chow have, like, a fullness meter and whatnot, so if it's not visible, you can see it in the Shao Chow editor. If they're not hungry, they'll, like, throw their food away and whatnot, but as you can see, when it takes one bite equals one, one little bit of stamina. And as I should probably so see, he's not hungry, so he's just going to throw it away. You can continuously force feed your chow if you so please. And I may just resort to doing that just for the sake of... Actually, no, I wouldn't. But you're going to want to start doing that if you want to, like, raise your chow. Alright, however, there is more to this chow. There are two hidden stats that I'm going to show up now on Fusion's Chow Editor. These are called the Luck Stat and the Intelligence Stat. They are hidden stats that... Nothing, like, directly raises them. The only way to raise these stats is just to give them drives and animals. For every drive and animal they get, it will increase by a small amount. It's a hidden stat, so essentially the older the child gets and the more you raise it, you'll automatically be increasing its luck and intelligence stat. So that's a nice thing. Alright, so now I'll just kind of show you the interactions you can do with your child. You can pet your child. This will make him, nice, make him like you. You can pick him up. You can, you can, I'm not going to throw him, I don't want to, because if you throw your chow, he may start crying. And I don't want my chow crying, I like chow. And now, as you probably know, there's this weird bubble on top of the chow. Right now, this chow isn't thinking much, it's pretty much brain dead. As you can see, because it's just this yellow ball above it. That ball corresponds to how it's feeling. There's a heart, if it's, it'll get like a heart if it's happy, it'll make swirlies, like a tornado, if it's tired or whatnot. It'll make a question mark if it's curious, and it'll make an exclamation point if it's, like, excited about something. Alright, so that explains the, uh, bare basics. I think let's go ahead and take this guy out, because once you get your chow, the kindergarten is going to be unlocked to you. You get this once you hatch your first chow. So this is the kindergarten. This is kind of like the central hub. You can do a lot here. So let's go ahead and go around in, I think it's counterclockwise position. We'll start out with the fortune telling house. The fortune telling house is um, where you name your chow. If your chow is a newborn, it'll give you a randomly name, and these names are pretty terrible. I'm just going to go with Chappie because I honestly don't care. And then your chow's name is now Chappie. You can name it yourself. I'll actually show you. If you go back in, like if your chow's already named, you can go in here. If it already has a name, you can change the name. And you just say, no. You don't like this name? Do you want wish a different name? How about naming the child yourself? Yes. And here you go. And this from here you can select you can make your own name. I'm not I'm not gonna just I, Okay, no, go away, you you dumb whore. I don't care. I don't care. See you again. There we go. Thank you. Alrighty. Next is the health center. As you can see, you can check to see if your health is sick. That's something that a lot of people, well, I think everyone knows, but Chow can get sick, but it is such a rare occurrence that there is, I've seen it once in over 400 hours of this game. I've seen it once. It's a very rare occurrence, and I may show it off using Fusion's Chow to just so you can see what it looks like. But next, we got probably one of the most important mechanics of Chow. These are the Chow's Holy shit, that's... <laughs> sorry. This is the child's stats. As you can see, all his abilities have a certain grade number. D, 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 S, E. Um, the grades go from S, which is the highest, to E, which is the lowest. Pretty much, this tells you how fast your child gains skills. Because every time the bar fills up, like the bottom bar with the blue dots fills up, 
your child will level up and it'll gain a certain number of skill. And how fast this goes up is determined by how high the number or the um the grade is. So higher grade chow will get more skill faster, and lower grade chow will get skills a lot slower. This is very important for racing because if your chow is like this, this chow would pretty much only be good in power competitions. His grades are so terrible on everything else that he'd only really be good in power competitions. So you might want to keep resetting till you get a chow that has decent grades because trust me, it's going to be important. I've gotten screwed out, out of chow. Like I've leveled everything to level 99 and I still couldn't win competitions because his grade was so low. Next up, we got the Chow Principal. This guy is pretty much just a tutorial for Chow World. If you don't want to listen to me babble on, you can go talk to him. Next up, we got the Classroom. Now from here, Chow can learn a whole bunch of different things. These don't actually affect the grades or anything, but they but they give your Chow like abilities that they can do in the garden, for example. Like for example, you go go dance, you, they, um, he may do a dance when he's in the child, like when he's bored. Other than that, and they also sometimes get toys, but other than that, it's completely useless. It's just kind of a nice thing you can do if you want. It doesn't rage intelligence like I thought it did when I was a kid, so yeah, that's not important. This is the bulletin board. You can, you can ask for detailed tips from the principal. And that, this was complete, it's completely useless. I don't even know why they added this. It's the same exact thing that you get throughout the entire game. Completely useless. But anyway, the black market, this is probably the most important part of the entire Chow, Chow Kindergarten. Because as you can see, you can buy a whole bunch of stuff here. This is the, even half of what you can buy. You can buy eggs, you can buy different fruits, you can buy tree seeds, which I'll go into more detail as we as it becomes necessary. You can buy hats, and you can buy other special items. You can even buy menu themes here. So this is a very, very important place to get familiar with. Now, most of this stuff isn't necessary. Hero fruit is just hero trade fruit. I'll go into that. I'll go into trades more in the next video. Dark fruit is exactly the opposite. Heart fruit will allow for breeding. I'll explain that later. And then just triangle fruits and whatnot. But there's one type of fruit called chow fruit that you can get here. It's not enabled right now, but maybe later it'll be. Hold on. Ugh. Shit. Chow fruit is very interesting, because when your chow eats it, it will put points in every single one of his abilities. So essentially, if you give him two chow fruit, they cost 200 rings each, though. Very costly, but in my opinion, one of the best ways to raise your chow's stats, like, just generally. For he eating two chow fruits will level up all his, all his stats by one level. It's, a, it's probably the best thing you can buy from here. And let me tell you, when you're tired of going through the same level and farming drives, chow fruit is like a godsend. Thing is, just be sure to stockpile rings so you won't need to go hunting for rings. Alrighty, so that's the chow garden in a nutshell. There really isn't a whole lot more to say. So I guess I'll just kind of go over some other things about chow. About just the basics of a chow when it's first born. Now, chow have personality. Personalities are... I don't notice them. Like, I don't know what they actually do. I don't think they do anything. I think it's just kind of superficial. If you go into Fusion Shower, you, you can change your child's personality. But it doesn't really affect anything, so I wouldn't worry about it. Chow can also have a favorite fruit, like for example, this one may like... You can find that out in the health center, by the way, what your favorite fruit is. I just didn't, because I'm an idiot. And, um, it's just, you know, favorite fruit. Doesn't do anything, again, pretty much completely pointless. Just a nice little thing they've added. Um, there's a whole bunch of different sliders for how your child can react. I'm just kind of popping those up, getting you familiar with those, like, for example. Your, it's urge to cry, urge to sleep, because child do sleep after a while. Because, you know, just like everything else, child go to sleep, they get tired. Poor little things. Alrighty, so, I think... That explains the most of the important stuff for Chow. By now, you should be familiar with the bare basics. At this point, you're, the only thing you're going to want to do is quite literally just decide what you want it to be. Like, who, who you're going to raise it with. Pick one character of one alignment. And by alignment, I mean, like, hero or dark. I'll explain why in the next part. Like, like for example, I'm going to raise this guy with Sonic. Just go into the levels, get drives and small animals. And just start raising this Chow stats up. The sooner, the better. And with that, I think we're going to end this part off here, and then the next part, I'm going to go into detail about the about Chow alignments, and the well, as the um, different stuff that you can do, like if you give them a certain amount of drives. Like, it's all alignments, like, not just, like, like, hero or dark alignment, but also his alignment with different stats. I'll explain that more in the next part. So with that, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.